my name is Steve McHugh and I am the author of the Helicon Chronicles, the Avalon Chronicles and the Rebellion Chronicles, the most recent book of which is uh, Death Unleashed, which is this one, which came out at the end of February, uh, which I'll be doing a reading from today. Um, I am in my garden at the back of the house in, uh, in sunny Southampton um, and uh, so you might be able to hear aircraft or cars and people and stuff but um hopefully won't be too distracted uh anyway i i will be uh, reading the prologue of this book and uh and let's get started december 1916 st petersburg for someone who could use fire magic to keep warm i was still bloody freezing i've been sitting on the frozen ground under a large tree for the better part of an hour I was wrapped up warmly in a big dark brown coat and thick trousers and carried several books that helped keep the cold out. But I still didn't want to be here. While my fire magic kept me warm, I couldn't use it too much of it for fear that anyone would see me. And I'd have to explain why steam was rising from all around me. The Malaya Nevka River was a stone's throw away, its icy top a crust on the frozen water beneath it. Any human who fell in would die in moments. Even a sorcerer like me would certainly remember the time without any fondness. I sighed, ignoring the suspicious glance from the man who walked past me. It was early in the morning and the only people out right now were those working and those up to something bad. I definitely looked like I belonged in the second camp. Stretching, I walked towards the bank of the river, hoping I hadn't been sent here for no reason. Two decades ago, I'd left Avalon when it had become apparent to me that it was built on corruption, and that even Merlin, a man I'd once considered a father figure, was capable of evil, but had convinced himself he was doing the right thing. The murders he'd ordered committed in the name of keeping Arthur alive in his coma still haunted me. I'd left Avalon and done very little else since. I'd just been beginning to figure out what I was meant to do next when Hades had offered me a job. Come to see St. Petersburg. Helping with someone who wanted to escape Hera's grasp. And maybe it would help me discover what I should do with my life. So far, it had only helped me realise that Russia was a mess. Economically, economically, socially, everything was heading towards disaster. I'd been in Russia for a few months, arranging everything, and the longer I'd spent in the company of workers and commoners, the angrier I'd seen them become. The ice thirty feet back from the bank broke and a gloved hand reached out to find purchase on the frozen surface. A second later, the hand vanished back beneath, and re-emerged ten feet further towards me as it smashed through again. This time a second hand appeared, <coughs> grabbing hold part of the fractured ice, but the hand slipped and fell back into the dark water. Just swim to the bank, I said, probably louder than needed. Either he heard my instruction, or he decided the bank was the best idea anyway, as less than a minute later, the cold, wet man dragged himself out of the water and onto the mud. He was taller than my own 5'9 by a few inches, but slighter in frame than I was, gaunt, almost. His looming presence was frankly disconcerting. I walked down to him, helped him to his feet, and practically dragged him up the bank before dropping him on the grass behind a stone wall. What if they see me? he asked in Russian, his voice trembling from the cold. They think you're dead, I told him, speaking his own language. At least I hope they do. They poisoned, beat, stabbed and shot me before throwing me into a frozen river, he said. I very nearly was dead. Well, if they don't think it now, they never will, I told him. Why don't you just pretend to die after the poisoning? Didn't realise I was poisoned until it was too late. By that point, they'd stabbed me. I pretended to die then, but apparently they needed to shoot me first. Have you ever been shot? It hurts like the fires of hell. Yes, I've been shot. I said. Now, to the world, Rasputin is dead, and in his place is... Actually, I have no idea. Call yourself Fred if you want. I will call myself whatever you wish, so long as you take me from Hera's grasp. That's why I'm here. How are we leaving? We have a carriage to take us to Finland, where we'll get... where we'll be getting on a boat to England, where we'll be changing to another boat to America. Once in New York, we'll... well, I'll explain that later. I took Rasputin to the nearby carriage, where its driver nodded a greeting. 
Any trouble? I asked him. He shook his head. Clothes are inside. Get changed, I told Rasputin. You're wearing fine clothing, and despite them being saturated and covered in mud, it's a bad idea for where we're going. Rasputin nodded and removed his coat, revealing the orange glyphs lit up over his arms. Fire magic keeping him warm and dry. It was why he hadn't died in the river. Being a sorcerer certainly had its advantages, although Rasputin Mutant was quite low on the power levels when it came to our kind. He was manipulative, cunning, and shrewd, but not powerful. He used fire and air magic, like me, although I had gone to great pains to explain to him that he should cross me. I would kill him. I climbed in the carriage just as Rasputin was pulling on a shirt, showing the scar on his stomach where a silver knife had been used to try and kill him a few years earlier. Hera sent you here to steer the Tsar and his family toward actions that benefited her, I said as the carriage set off, like keeping Europe from descending into war. Rasputin nodded. Didn't work out so well. The war is a mistake. I actually agree with Hera on that. Me too, I said. It's a waste of time, money, resources, and more importantly, people. Life's thrown away because of pettiness and politics. But once the war started, Hera changed her position, using you to get information about the Russians' military plans. She saw an opportunity, and didn't care how many lives were sacrificed to benefit her. I know what I've done. Rasputin snapped. Hera crows power over all else. She might not have wanted the war initially, but once it happened, she would have to use it to her own ends. She constantly switches sides, playing them off one another to ensure that whoever wins, she's on their side. I cannot work for her any longer. Hera has started rumours that you and the Tsar are members of a pro-German group, that you're encouraging the Tsar to make a separate peace treaty with Europe. A lot of people want your head. As I discovered, Rasputin said. Thank you for arranging my death, by the way. It took me a couple of weeks to put the idea in a few heads that your death would be better for Russia, I said. Funny, they didn't take much convincing. They really don't like you. I may have suggested some suitable methods. Ensuring you were disposed of in the right manner was important. The last thing we want is for them cutting off your head or using silver. Decapitation could kill us, just as it would any human, and silver hurt like hell. Well, I'm glad you helped. Rasputin, the drunken debaucher who influenced Azar and his wife, I said with a smile. Hera has clearly finished her use of you. You made a good decision to seek Hades' help. Hera is a monster, he said. She lies and betrays everyone. There's no one she wouldn't sacrifice should it aid her. Her own family is terrified of her. I've met her on several occasions, I said. Never been someone I liked. Why work for over all these years if that's how you felt? Being on Hera's list of enemies is a good way to seek an early grave. Once you're in her grasp, getting out is not as easy as walking away. Rasputin coughed and spat out of the open window, closing it afterwards. What happens once we've reached our destination? You will tell your interviewers everything, and I do mean everything. Hera's plans, plots, schemes, and why she wants the Tsars to fall. You'll leave nothing out. And in return, you will be rehomed somewhere safe with a new identity. You will never refer to yourself as Rasputin again. You will learn a language that it is Russian. I don't care which one. You will always need to look over your shoulder. Because if Hera should discover you didn't die... Rasputin sighed and nodded. We both know what Hera was capable of. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in and listening to me uh, read. And also a big thank you for everyone at Super Relax Fantasy Club for uh, letting me read and for creating this channel, allowing so many authors to take part. Hopefully, um, that was a fly by the way, not me just swatting the, the screen. Hopefully, um, those of you who come to watch uh, will find a new author or authors that you, uh, y you, you'll find their work and enjoy. Uh, so, until next time, everyone stay safe, and um, thank you very much. Bye.